Eusocial insects are quite common in Chimir. Ants, termites, and a diverse clade of eusocial cockroaches called conifer mites, found only in Chimir, are abundant throughout the known world. This bounty of high-protein critters has resulted in a wide range of animals specialized in their consumption. In Tuesday's episode, we will cover this colorful cast in more detail. Today, we're going to be talking about one particularly successful group of insectivorous mammals, the pangolins. Pangolins are an ancient group that on Earth go back to at least the KT extinction, and possibly earlier. They are best known for their armor. Great scales line their backs, arms, faces, and tails. Although they resemble the scales of a fish, these blade-tipped segments are made from keratin, the same material as fingernails and hair, and could perhaps be better understood as hardened fur. They have powerful claws that they use to dig into insect nests and trees. Most walk on all fours, crawling on their knuckles to keep their claws sharp, although some are facultatively bipedal. Penguins do not have functional teeth, instead relying on swallowed pebbles in their gizzards to grind up insects. On Earth, penguins are found throughout Africa and Asia, numbering eight species. Although African and Asian penguins are found in Chimere, both brought during the harvesting spikes since the late Miocene, most in the known world and beyond are descended from one of the rare harvests during the height of the Tyrant Dynasty. The common or bearded pangolin is one such species. Found throughout the known world, on every continent and most islands, they are particularly fond of the conifer mites most abundant in the temperate and tropical rainforests that is the most widespread terrestrial biome. They are excellent swimmers, floating and kicking their way to potential food directed by an extremely keen nose. The common pangolin is a popular pet amongst the Picardiant. They are more social than most pangolins and fairly docile, making for accommodating companions. In addition to their pleasant nature, they are also quite useful in early detection of conifer mites, allowing villages with a few pangolins to prevent infestations. They, like most pets, are regularly cleaned to stave off potential disease, which are known to spread from them and pet bats to their human companions although basic care mitigates most of these risks. By far the largest pangolin is the giant pangolin of the Housie Prairie. These massive termite specialists often grow 15 feet in length and weigh well over a ton, sometimes two in exceptional specimens. This size is both for defense and efficient travel. The size also helps them dominate feeding sites which in the known world are highly competitive given the high rate of harvesting in recent years. In fact, the prairie pangolin of the known world was driven to extinction by diseases and all this competition. The giant pangolin found today was among those migrants from the eastern continent that came to the known world in the past million years. They aren't common in large part due to their slow reproduction, but as efficient travelers and boasting impressive defenses like 20-inch claws and scales on their tail that self-sharpen and cut like shears when the tail flexes, all to fend off the many large predators of their homeland, they can quite easily assert themselves at feeding sites. The giant pangolin is a keystone species among specialists of you social insects on the Housie Prairie for reasons that I'll get into in the next episode. While most pangolins of the established Chimeran clade came through the early Oligocene, Asian and African pangolins have found success in the known world. The tree pangolin that came from Southeast Asia is common in the angiosperm jungles of the Crescent, digging into trees to get wood mites. They are less widespread than the common pangolin, which prefers conifer rainforests, but quite frequently encountered by many Chimerans as their range is mostly contained within imperial lands. The lesser prairie pangolin is the most recent arrival and lives in the shadow of their titanic cousins. Due no doubt to their strange anatomy, for thousands of years pangolins were believed by Chimerans to be non-therian mammals that evolved on the eastern continent and came to the known world, rather than having come through the portal. 
It was not until recently that Chimera naturalists discovered that they are not only evolved on Earth, but are very much Therian mammals, with their closest living relatives being carnivorans like cats and dogs. As on Earth, the unique anatomy of pangolins has captured the fascination of chimerans. Pangolin scales are popular to incorporate into armor, although it is usually metal-plated or lacquered if intended for combat. The scales of the giant pangolin in particular are popular with the Shu, both by Dolani nomads and the conglomerate who became the Chakati Empire. Although they are hunted and harvested, it is not on an industrial level, and there is no significant concern for their continued survival. On Tuesday, we will discuss how pangolins fit into the overall cast of eusocial insect specialists, a topic I'm quite excited to explore. For Pangolin Day, I encourage you all to take a few minutes to look into the threats that these amazing animals face. On Earth, pangolins were once widespread and highly successful. Because of habitat loss, overhunting, and poaching to fuel an industry of false medicine, humans have made most species of pangolins extremely endangered. I hate to end this video on a downer, but I feel the reality of the situation that pangolins face should not be sugarcoated. They are innocent victims of our greed, ignorance, and gluttony. We must do better, both for the sake of the global ecology and for ourselves. We are a part of this world, and the consequences of our actions will be felt, no matter how much we dig our heels in denial. Please live consciously. Until next time, take care.